Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back Melanie Kinnaman, who you all remember as Pam in Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. She has ventured off into the world of one-woman show slash stand-up comedy, and when she posted on Facebook earlier this month that she was going to be doing a show with all these uh, stand-up comedians in L.A., including Ian Edwards, I just fucking jumped the chance. I could not believe that uh, Melanie was venturing off into that world, so I'm having her on the show today to talk about that, what made her write a one-woman show, and how she got booked for this stand-up comedy show. I'm just so excited because I, I, it's not often I get to talk to an actress uh, about stand-up comedy, unless it's a stand-up comedian who's also an actor. So, uh, yeah, here is my, my new interview with Melanie Kinnaman. Hey, Melanie. Hey, how are you? I am great. How are you? Good. What part of California are you in? Redding. Okay. North. Very north. Yeah, very north. And How's the weather there? Very hot. <laughs> <laughs> Us too. Yeah. We've had a heat wave. We've had a heat wave now for uh, almost two weeks. Yeah, our heat wave is pretty bad. And last year it was it was really really bad because we had some fires here last year. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I remember how awful that was. Yeah. A lot of fires up north too. Yeah. I, I don't know why I didn't know you lived in California. Yeah. <laughs> you live in the Midwest somewhere. So everything's good with you? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm getting ready to go to a Comic-Con this weekend that I'm going to cover. Good. And um, the other day I saw the new Quentin Tarantino movie. I can't wait to see it. I'm seeing it next week. Yeah, I'm not There's even... There's much going on right now, so I can't, but I'm going to see it as soon as the gig is over. So. Yeah, I'm not even going to spoil it for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. You liked it, though. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah, yes. yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, you're going to enjoy it. You know, it's one of those things you probably see a couple of times. Yes. I, I, in fact, I may go see it again next week. Yeah, did you see it in 70 millimeter or 35? Uh, I can't remember. I ha- probably 35. Maybe 35, yeah. yeah. I, I don't really pay attention. I just want to see the movie, you know? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, things are great. Good. So when uh, when did you decide you were going to venture in the world of one woman show and stand up comedy? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because the one woman show thing I had been working on for years and mm-hmm. then got sidelined doing other stuff. But it's something I've been wanting to put together for a while, and it finally started to come together a year ago. And um, in the course of doing that, uh, I got offered a book deal. Oh. So in with the book deal, um, they said, you know. With the one woman show, you have a lot of comedy in there and a lot of tragedy. Mm-hmm. So you should probably, the, the lawyer who got the book deal for me said, you should probably consider doing stand-up. I said, me? He said, yes, you're very funny and it will help you with the one woman show because there are sections in it where it's stand-up like, you know. And I had never, all, I, most of my friends are stand-up comedians. Mm-hmm. You know, really professional, been doing it forever. Jay Leno is one of them. Oh, and love Jay. I just never, I, I used to see them all the time, and I'm, I'm in that scene, but I've never gotten up and done it. So fast forward, last January, I started, um, you know, getting ready to do it and starting to do it and writing and actually getting up on stage and doing it at open mics and that kind of thing, workshops. And I got booked. Somebody saw me, and I got booked at a big venue here called Tellos. And mm-hmm. I'm doing that show on August 7th. So it's my first. I've been doing it for a while, but it's my first really big stand-up debut. Wow. Yeah. So it's exciting. It's scary. It's all those things. But uh, it's really changed everything I'm doing. So I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm doing it. Uh, that's great. Yeah, I've been doing open mic stand-up on and off for 13 years. It's- wow. It's a lot of it's a lot it's a lot of work. It's really it's hard. A lot of work. Yeah. I, I have great respect for people that do it because I'm in the trenches right now doing it, and it's very hard. I mean, you're constantly writing, you're constantly trying out new stuff, 
Mm -hmm. this particular show I'm doing, I have to stick to my set. So basically I'm just um, working that set at all the different shows I'm doing in the last month or so. And I, I've added some new things in that work, so I'm going to keep them in. But you know what it's like. You kind of keep reworking the same set to really get it tight. Mm-hmm. Dude, so uh, with this uh, one-woman show, are you going to play any characters in it? No. Uh, basically, I'm, um, it's, it's autobiographical, and I'm a singer-dancer. <coughs> so I incorporate some of that in it. And I talk about Friday, you know, doing Friday the 13th and getting that part and how that changed my life, you know, mm -hmm. being a scream queen. Because it really did change my life. And at the time that I was doing it, I was just doing it and didn't really think about it. But the truth is it changed my life. Yeah. Wow. And so um, you're going to write a book as well? Or you yeah. are writing it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it's everything at once. Wow. But doing the show writing the show and getting chapters done in the book have kind of worked together. You know what I mean? You're kind of doing both, even though they're different. Yeah. Um, but the stand up part is separate. So having to write the set and new material all the time and try to get, you know, new pages for the book has been overwhelming, yeah. but it can be done. And it's amazing. I'm sure you know this for yourself when you push yourself to do things you think you can't do. You find out you can do something, you know, and it changes you as a person. Oh, yeah. I mean, this podcast is one of them. You know, right. I I, I, did, I I didn't think I was going to make it past 10 episodes, and then I just kept going, and now I'm on 523. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. It's, it's, and that's a lot of work. It is. Cause you I don't know how much work that is. Oh yeah, I got to email the person. I got to like you know write down a list of things to talk about, questions, all that stuff. It's yeah. really really difficult. People think you just get on and you talk, and <clears throat> true, you know, a lot of preparation people don't know about. And same thing with stand up people. You know, it kind of looks easy when the really good ones do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's never easy. It's never easy. I found out how difficult <clears throat> it is. Yeah, and and you know they think a lot of the stuff. You know, is just being um, off the cuff, which it can be. You it know. can be, but for the most part, it's a setup set. I mean, you worked, you 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 wrote it, you worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it, and then I will throw in some ad libs that happen to come, and they work. But most of it is not ad libs, you know. So you you got to write everything. Mm hmm. Absolutely. So there's and the timing for it, everything. Yeah. There's, there's, so there's going to be a lot of uh, deeply personal stuff that the public has never heard before? Right, right, right. Especially, uh, well, in the book, of course. But the stand-up, <clears throat> I'm doing a lot of personal stuff that nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Most of it. You know, and the Friday the 13th stuff is funny. I talk about um, different, different aspects of, of shooting it and also interaction with fans and some of the things they've said to me. And a lot of that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like meeting the fans and a lot of funny things happen that are unexpected. But yeah. the other stuff in, in, the, in my set is personal, things that have happened to me. And I even mentioned Harvey Weinstein. That seems to get a big laugh, which is kind of funny because it's a I, dark thing. But um, I added that in and I hadn't planned to, but I wrote something yesterday and I added it into the show that I did last night and it worked. So I'm going to keep it for the Vitello show. I, I didn't even know you had a, a Weinstein story. Wow, I can't wait. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I'm part of that whole lawsuit thing, you know. He, uh, yeah. He, um, I had a problem with him, and then he stopped my career for 10 years. So, Ugh, yeah, terrible. he kept me from working for 10 years. So I talk about that. There's a lot of stuff people don't know. And I had tried to report it, and my agent told me, you cannot do this, keep your mouth shut, can't say anything. This was back when it happened. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward, now people are coming out. So I came out and told my story and to the police, and then I did a couple of depositions. So it's the age of the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do you, everything comes out eventually? Eventually, yes. So did you, uh, do 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 you go to like um, like theaters or comedy clubs? Do like you know practice? Yes, I've been doing it. I've been doing a crash course. I'm doing it every night. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got the Vitello's gig for August 7th, I got that about six weeks ago, and I have not stopped 
doing stand-up at club for the last six weeks. Wow. Every night. I do one last night. I got one tonight. One tomorrow night. Because that, you know, that's how you perfect. That's how you perfect the material, it. the timing, the delivery, everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm new to it, so I have a lot more to learn than someone like you who's been doing it for 13 years. Yeah, the, the last couple of years that I was in the Bay Area doing it, I met a lot of uh, women in their 60s and 70s that were doing uh, stand-up for the first time. And only one, only one of them that I know is still doing it. All the other ones, they, 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 they stopped after about a year or two. Well, it's very hard. And, and again, my purpose for doing it was not to become a stand-up comedian. My purpose for doing it came out of the show, the one-woman show. So... This is kind of an offshoot of it, and I've been really encouraged by my stand-up com friends who have been doing it, like I said, for 30 years, who are well-known, and they said, you can do this. And I said, well, I don't consider myself a comic. They said, you can do this. You know, you're funny, you've got the material, and the fact that it scares you is the reason to do it, because you will become a much better performer. Three comedians told me that, and I thought, okay. Wow, I never thought of it like that before, but that does make sense. Mark Brazil, who is, uh, started out as a comic, yeah. Mark Brazil is the creator and the writer of that 70s show. Right. Yeah, and he's been very, very uh, helpful and instrumental in um, pushing me. You know, he's the, he's the one that said, and I will quote Mark Brazil, the reason you have to do this, Melanie, is because it scares you. And that will make you a better performer. Wow. Yeah. That's deep. <laughs> and he was right. It's actually the last six, seven weeks I've changed. It's, it's changed me as a person. And I can't explain how. Because mm -hmm. would, it, would, it would take, you know, hours. And I've changed as a performer. So my one, and, and he was correct. My one woman show got better for having to train to do the stand-up set. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different world. Yeah. Than acting. I, I have noticed that some people get angry that, oh, you're an actor, so you think you can do anything. That's not true. Oh. But they get very upset when I go to some of these mics and they know who I am and they say, well, what makes you think you can do comedy? <clears throat> yeah, I got that too when I started because I, I made no bones about the fact that I did stage acting before yeah. I got into it, you know. So yeah. I, I can relate to that. So you know. Yeah. yeah. Are so you, I just ignore it because they try to stop you. Yeah. That's definitely what I do. Are you, so, are you, so are you a great joke teller in general, Melanie? Yeah, I'm funny. I, I, and it's not the same. I mean, I'm witty and funny. People tell me. My friends say I think I'm very funny. But that's just natural. Uh, you know it's different on stage. Yeah. Whole different thing. I mean, a lot of people are funny off stage. So I'm using that, and I've written some what I think are interesting things to talk about that bring humor. And, of course, the Friday the 13th stuff is humorous. So I, I think I have something to bring to the stage, and we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always been that way, too. People will tell me that I, that, I, that I can be witty at times, but when I'm at a party or something, I'm always the first to, like, tell dirty jokes, you know, and I do it here on the podcast as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I see that um, Ian Edwards is going to headline the show. I saw yeah. him three years ago. Um, I was at the, the Ice House in Pasadena, and yeah. uh, he opened for Joe Rogan and just completely destroyed. Yeah, he's very funny. So, yeah, he's the headliner that night. I'm anxious to see him. Yeah, he, he can go pretty dark at times, you know. He tells rape jokes sometimes, but he's a funny guy. Yeah, he seemed, uh, you know, I, the, the, the stuff that I've seen him do, I thought he was just great. Mm -hmm. he'll, be bringing, he'll be bringing in a whole new thing on uh, next Wednesday. So uh, I, I'm anxious for the whole thing, you know. I'll yeah. let you know how it goes. Oh, yeah, that would be I great. don't know if they're going to be taping it or what, but it's, it's a big event. They're, they're, a band is opening up for us, and then... Um, than the show. Mm -hmm. who, uh, so who are your favorite comedians, Melanie? Wow. Well, you know, a lot of them are deceased. I love George Carlin. Oh, best. But the ones that are alive that I love and I actually know, Richard Lewis, 
Do you know who Richard Lewis is? I love Richard Lewis. I've seen him live. I, he's my neighbor. I <laughs> love him. I, there is, he never makes me, I, I mean, I've never seen him not make the place go insane. He's yeah. that funny. So Richard Lewis is one of my favorites. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld I like, but he's a different, different kind of uh, humor. Yeah. I always loved Jay Leno. He's changed over the years, but Jay, Jay has been so supportive over the years, so I, I can never kind of uh, say anything negative about Jay. He, he's still doing, you know, he does a comedy magic club every Sunday night. He does his stand-up. Yeah, I, I want to make yeah. it out there one of these days. Yeah, every Sunday he does a comedy magic. Yeah, Jimmy Brogan opens for him. Jimmy Brogan's a friend. He's been supportive. Um, he's very funny. Um I loved, um, you know, I like Louis Anderson a lot. Oh, yeah. I love Louis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and of, of female comics, I liked, you know, the, I don't really like the newer ones because they, they do, their material is too blue, too dirty. Mm -hmm. um, I like the old school, <clears throat> like uh, Elaine Boozler. I don't know if you know her. Yeah. She was very, very clever. Um, a great writer. I loved Freddie Prinze. I knew him when he started out. He, his act when he was 18, 19 mm -hmm. was awesome. He was just a natural comic. So I tend to like more of that and not so much the newer ones um, because they tend to be a little bit too dirty for my taste. It seems like the easy laugh when you do, you know, dick jokes. Yeah, that's that, that's my department. <laughs> it's an easy laugh, but um, yeah. you know, I like Amy Poehler. I think Tina Fey is brilliant. Uh, I know she's not considered a stand-up, but she did do that. She's a great writer. Yeah. That's, good. that's the kind of stuff I like. Yeah, I uh, have interviewed a lot of the guys that was at the comedy store in the 70s and 80s, like uh, Tom Dreesen and Jackson Perdue yeah. and um, Lois Bromfield and Carrie yeah. Snow, all these great Diane comedians. Diane Nichols is my best friend, and she's been very supportive. She's come to some of the open mics and watched me and given me some pointers. Oh yeah, I've been. I've messaged her, trying to get her on the podcast. Yeah, she's uh, one of my best friends. And she's from the, the Bay Area, like I am. Yes, yeah, she is from San Francisco. Yeah. Yep. Carrie Snow is her? too. I'm sorry. Have you ever met her? I haven't met her yet. Oh. No. Yeah. Well, she'll be front and center at my show. <laughs> I told her don't sit too far front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have eye contact with people I know that well. So. Did you, did you collect uh, uh, comedy records back in the day? Oh, yeah. yeah. Again, it was all um, everything George Carlin did. Yeah. Everything he did. I was lucky enough to be on a radio show with his brother a couple of years ago. Wow. And he told me, uh, God, he, he, he would love the fact that I uh, uh, am one of his biggest fans if, if he were alive. And he told me. Uh, about how much this was like when Trump announced that he was running for president, mm. and so he like said, "Oh, George would have a field day with this." Oh, <laughs> oh George would have endless material. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did. And he well, this he, just on Trump, endless material on Trump, and he would have gotten us through these last bunch of years we've had to go through with this guy. Mm -hmm. Humor would have maybe gotten us through a little easier with uh, Trump. There's not a whole lot, there's not a whole lot that's funny about it. Yeah. The country is kind of going through a lot of on both sides. You know, it's not just one side. I think um, I think all of Washington is just really I don't know what's happened. Yeah, and another thing too, the problem the problem with a lot of a lot of comedians nowadays in my generation and younger, a lot of them are so much on stage like they are off stage with their blue material and yeah. stuff. And me. Yeah. It's just a persona, you know. I'm very yeah. much a gentleman off stage, right? You know, and like Chris Rock, yeah. Like Chris Rock, yeah, and and like Andrew Dice Clay too. I like, yeah, I like Chris Rock a lot. I liked Eddie Murphy. Oh, he's got uh, he's he just signed a contract with Netflix to have some specials out. That's great. Yeah, it's about time that he came back to stand up. Yeah. I used to watch uh, Delirious, uh, his special, with my dad when my mom wasn't home. <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. Yeah, my mom had a... Um... I like Ray Romano, too. Ray Romano has very good material. Yeah, he does. My, my mom, she had a vinyl record of Lily Tomlin, This Is a Recording. Oh, that's also great. Yep. A great album, yeah. 
that that bit she does where she's calling Joan Crawford. Yeah. That bit was, um, was a great. She's just great. Yeah. Yeah, she's a genius. She is. She is. We also had um, Cheech and Chong's Big Bamboo. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, with the uh, with the uh, the uh, the rolling paper uh, jacket inside. <laughs> right. It was classic. Classic stuff. These guys were geniuses. Yeah. Last time you were on um, was last summer, and you told me that you had some movies that were on the shelf. Did any of them get released yet? Not released yet, but I will let you know when they are. Some of them may end up going to Netflix, because Netflix seems to buy everything, you know. Netflix, I, Amazon. I'm also going to be doing a great show. Uh, I can't talk about it yet, but I just got the script for it, and they offered me the part. It's a Netflix series, so as soon as I get the go-ahead that I can talk about it, I will get back on the radio with you, and I'm not, I mean on the podcast, and... Uh, We'll talk about it because oh. I think you'll find it very amusing. Okay, cool. It's a, uh, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Deborah Voorhees is making her movie Thirteen Fanboy. Did she offer you a role in that? No, no, I hadn't heard from her. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. She's got so many people from the franchise and just horror in general in it. Yeah. And. The, the more people that got added to it, you know, after they donated and stuff, and more people that got cast, I'm like, oh, my God, this movie is just going to be epic, you know? Yep, yep. I'm sure she had a plan of how she wanted it to go, and she asked certain people, because I see a lot of other people that weren't uh, asked to be in it, you know? Yeah, I auditioned for it, and... But the whole purpose of, of of it was to just to make Deborah laugh because I love making Deborah laugh and yeah. I, I was ter- I was terrible in it though but at least I get a special thanks um, during the credits because I donated. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, and they're shooting it now, right? Yeah, they're shooting yeah. it now, and it's going to be pretty cool, I think. Yeah, it's great. I wonder yeah. where they're going to release it. I don't. I have no idea. Maybe. You know, because they're they're probably going to take it on the festival circuit, and then ah. it's going to get released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all these independent films now are being you know taken to the festivals and stuff. Right, right. Well, it should do well because there are a lot of fans that want this to happen. Yep, and I'm one of them. I know a lot of the people that are in it, so I'm sure it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Well, Melanie, I thank you so much for coming back on today. You're welcome. Thanks for promoting my stand-up yes next <laughs> next wednesday august 7th at uh where in studio city it's at vitello's at um michael feinstein's club Vitello's mm-hmm. in studio city it's on tahunga and the show starts at eight perfect yeah let me know how it goes i will thanks for your interest my pleasure you have yourself a great day you too bye-bye now okay bye-bye Well, there you have it. Melanie Kinnaman. Ain't she a sweetheart? Yes, she is, as always. And I'm glad she's venturing into the world of stand-up comedy slash one-person show. And I know it's going to be successful because she's got a lot to talk about. You know, with Friday the 13th Part 5, the Weinstein thing, everything. She's going to be successful with this show. Um, If you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.